my lovely, lovely imps, there are people lying about me on the internet yet again. I know that it comes as no surprise to anybody who's been watching my, my channel for any length of time, really. But people, for some reason, there's something special about me uh, that, that seems to make people love to lie about me on the internet, like in a very unique way. And I'm gonna try and outline that to the best of my ability. Um, you see, people do one of two things. They either uh, abjectly lie about me to the degree where they don't ever actually engage with me at all. Like they lie over me. They use me as like a uh, as like a paper thin prop up that they can just sort of plaster whatever lies they want on it. Or uh, in the alternative, uh, they ignore me completely and pretend that I don't exist because I'm inconvenient for their worldview. Uh, I've talked about this a number of times about the sort of erasure that I that I've encountered since I've entered this space. Now, uh, I've been a streamer now for almost three years. At the end of this month, it will be my three-year streaming anniversary. That's a long time to be a streamer, and my channels had, you know, quite a lot of uh, of success, which I'm very very happy about. But it's been a lot of success in spite of an overwhelming amount of just complete and utter lies that have been spread about me. Um, it, it's weird. Uh, I have had manifestos written about me. I have had enormous content creators uh, use me as like a, a, as some kind of like, like a dartboard that they just throw random things at that they think will stick to me. Um, and I've also had this other thing, which is that, um, Certain factions of Twitter find me very inconvenient because I am a very loud, very open, very progressive, uh, very outspoken. Wait, did I already say that? Did I already say outspoken? I might have said that twice. Um, trans woman. And, uh, and I often dissent from certain factions of trans people online that like to sort of claim that they represent uh, a monolith or that they represent the voice of the entire trans community. Um, it's very frustrating to me. Um, it, it's incredibly frustrating to me, in fact. Uh, like, here, let me give you a specific and hard example of this from the past. Um, for a long time, I was a debate streamer. I really liked doing debate. I don't do debate as frequently as I used to, uh, partially because the debate scene has collapsed and partially because it's just not fun for me anymore. Um, but for a long time, I was a debate streamer and there was all of these sort of video essayists and uh, a bunch of pretty big video essayists actually and a lot of other content creators who would sort of regularly rage about debate streamers and debate bros. And despite the fact that I was a well-known name in debate spaces, they would never even mention me existing because they needed to be able to say that debate streamers are all just uh, cis reactionary white men um, and having a neurodivergent, openly neurodivergent trans woman uh, 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 as a debate streamer was very inconvenient to whatever message they were sort of lazily trying to slap together. So instead, people just would pretend that I didn't exist. Even when I was having major accomplishments, even when I was on some of the biggest and uh, I had so much exposure, like, like guys, there was a point in which nearly every single debate streamer in existence in the English speaking world Almost all of them were talking about me at the same time. There were times in my debate past where I would go onto Twitch and I would look in the debate sphere and the top six videos would have my face on there because every debate streamer at, at the moment of size from size, tiny size to big size was talking about me. And yet there is an entire sphere of the web that would just pretend that I wasn't that I didn't exist. And interestingly, they didn't come to my aid either. When I was, when I had fucking manifestos written about me that were completely fabricated, just, just complete and utter bullshit. Um, there was an entire faction of people who claimed to care about representation, who claimed to care about listening to marginalized voices, who just never came to my aid. They just pretended that I didn't exist because if they, if they if they acknowledge that I existed, it would put a hole in their moneymaker, which is making long essays complaining about the existence of debate bro streamers and saying that debate bro streamers and debates are destroying the left. 
It's incredibly, incredibly depressing. Um, do you remember when the Hippy Dippy Championship's entire theme was all my takes? Yes, unironically. There was a point at which the, at the time, biggest debate championship show on the entire internet was all the all of the subjects were takes that I had made. And yet, people pretended that I didn't exist. It's very disappointing and frustrating. So there's a lot of people who try to pretend to acknowledge that, who like sort of refuse to acknowledge that I even exist. Um, but there's also people who um, sort of just fly off the handle and think that I'm, uh, and just project things onto me without ever uh, actually, um, uh, without ever actually engaging with anything that I have to say. And I'm gonna show you an example of that that makes me really, really pissed off, okay? So, let me just let me just bring this up real quick so I can give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, here I'm gonna have to pause this. I, I bet this guy's got a. Yeah, we go. Okay, no autoplay. Great. So this right here is a channel or is a is a YouTube content creator by the name of Ryan Beard. Now some people know this guy as Mr. Beard, uh, but just so you guys know, Ryan Beard is a verified YouTube account with 598,000 subscribers, okay? 500, that's 600,000 subscribers. Now for the record, at the moment of recording, I have 21,000 subscribers. So this guy has got uh, uh, 15 plus, more than 15 times the size of my subscribers, okay? But I'm gonna show you something that is uh, unfortunately uh, uh, very, very disappointing. Oh, whoa, hey, we may have actually gotten a, uh, uh, <laughs> we may have actually gotten a response. It looks like maybe we just got a response. Live update, we'll go take a look at it in just a, a second. Can you say they use they, them? Oh, I apologize, I had no way of knowing that. Uh, they use they, them, I apologize. Uh, my, my, my mistake. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, I apologize about that. I didn't know they used they them. I didn't wasn't on their uh, wasn't on their bio and isn't in their YouTube bio. So, sorry, I did a little bit of an assump assumptive arena there. Uh, I, I I saw everybody referring them to uh, uh, referring to them as Mr. Beard. So I assumed that they used masculine pronouns. Apologies about that. Um, this is just so fucking edgy and cool. Look, they're saying the edgy word that people don't want them to say, which makes them cool and badass. Damn, I tip my fedora to these absolute savages. And of course, a lot of people uh, in the comments took this as believing that because I titled my stream The Arsler, aka the word retard, uh, that somehow they could assume from that my entire position, despite the fact that I literally just titled the video the actual topic that I was going to be discussing. Um, and I find that to be pretty shitty. I find it to be pretty shitty to blow me up in front of your, uh, in, pr in front of your gigantic audience, uh, based on misinformation. Um, it, it's pretty bad. Uh, and especially because I actually probably agree more with them than they imagine. Uh, and it was very frustrating, especially because as I went through the comments, uh, like I said, the comments of which there were many, you know, there is a lot of comments on this video. Like there is a lot of comments on this video and a lot of people were here shitting on me being like, wow, this is fucking, this is fucking, uh, uh, you know, this is fucking to be expect. What do you expect from shitty political streamers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, a lot. I, there's just tons. There's just tons of these going through here. Uh, of people saying that. And there was about, at the time that I saw this, there was about four people, maybe in the entirety of the, of the comments who even were willing to point out that my video was actually not the take that this person was uh, uh, assuming. It's very frustrating to me because I can't imagine um, I can't really imagine why you would make such an assumption. And the sad thing is, there's another YouTuber here, a YouTuber who I have collaborated with, We're in Hell, um, 
And this this one is really ironic to me, okay? Because I want to call this one out just a little bit, okay? Um, We're in Hell, who I have collaborated with and praised and actually quite like M We're in Hell's videos. Um, they're so fucking lame, goddamn. Which is kind of ironic that they're using the word lame here to describe my video, which was actually arguing against people using the uh, R slur. Which is really weird. Now, there were a lot of people who were doing this, okay? And it made me pretty mad. It made me pretty mad to, to know that even when I go out of my way to make a segment that is, in my opinion, very, very careful, thoughtful, um, yes, uh, yes, eye-catching. Yes, I did, I did spicily choose to name the title the actual word uh, that I was talking about, but I didn't call anybody the slur. I didn't uh, name the title. I didn't. I didn't put on the title. You are a retard. I didn't do anything like that. I just titled it just like that because I really, really wanted people to actually sit down and pay attention to the video. Because if I had said discussing the recent discourse, nobody would have fucking clicked. Let's be real. Um, there were eight, nearly eight hundred people who actually showed up to listen to me give my take that I did. And it was very frustra frustrating to me. Um, so I, 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 I pointed out on Twitter that uh, it ex it's extremely frustrating and off-putting to me that so many people are so eager to sort of jump onto dog piles of Vosh and Keffels um, that they actually won't listen to the words that I say. They won't actually even bother clicking on the video to find out what my take is. And I think that that problem is sort of emblematic of a world in which the truth is not um, particularly, like nobody really cares about the truth of these issues. It's all just sort of layered signaling. It's sort of like, I don't like Vosh. I don't like Keffels. I'm being cool by, uh, by, by signaling these things. Even if, even if they're using me, my name, my channel, my video, that they never bothered to even click on or check out. They don't know anything about me, but they feel like they could sort of just prop me up as like a paper cutout to support their sort of strange alternate reality. And I, I find that very frustrating. I feel like uh, it's, it sort of plays into the broader problem that I've had in these spaces of finding myself either completely erased when I'm inconvenient to be talked about or used as some kind of a prop. I mean, let's be real. Like I've had a, a, a number of, let's just say one or two particularly large streamers who have completely lied about who I am, what I believe. They've completely fabricated an entire false narrative about me. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, here, um, that that uh, that Ryan Beard, uh, uh, you know, was one of the people who did this to the same degree. I do not think, for the record, that Ryan Beard is anything like, uh, say, somebody like Destiny, who wrote two separate manifestos about me. Like, come on. Um, yeah, like, I, I just... It frustrates me, uh, though, that there's this pattern of it happening where uh, despite the fact that I put a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of thought into my takes that I don't actually just constantly um, bait engagement. It's actually funny, too, because um, in the past, people used to get mad that I was too spicy uh, way back when. Um, there was a ton of people who would say, oh, you're too spicy, Demon Mama. You, you, you go too hard, too quickly. You don't, you know, you don't give people the time of day. And now they were talking about conservatives. They were talking about people, transphobes. They were saying, I jumped the gun on reacting to people who were, uh, who were conservatives and transphobes. Um, and now that I actually take even more time to carefully lay out my, uh, opinions, um, that, that I find that it doesn't make any difference. People treat me the exact same way that they did before. Almost like I don't matter. Almost like who I am and what I do doesn't even factor into it at all. People are, t are, pa are uh, pinging me.
I never claimed to know exactly what your take was. I was mostly criticizing Vosh and Keffels. My only issue with you is your purposely inflammatory stream title. Ah, uh, well, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm glad that you actually decided to come by. I do appreciate that. Um, but, uh... I'm sure you can probably understand that that's sort of exactly what I'm talking about here, right? Um, like, people do this to me all the time. They're mad at Keffels or Vosh or somebody else, and they sort of use me as a object within that without ever really thinking about it sometimes. And um, I find that really disappointing, especially as someone who really does and would benefit greatly from having my voice heard. Um, and I find it frustrating that so many people who... Uh, like, like I said, a lot of the people who engage in this, and I'm not saying that, that you, um, you know, at, at, that you, Ryan Beard, necessarily are the one who's doing this exact same thing. Obviously, this is sort of our first engagement. So, who knows? Maybe this isn't like a, a, a you know, maybe this isn't a normal thing for you or whatever. Um, but... Oh, but there's a, a lot of people who claim to care about listening to marginalized people's voices. And this is an issue, this particular topic is an issue that touches my unique intersection. I have, I, I've been diagnosed with ADHD for a huge chunk of my adult life and I've dealt with neurodivergence for my entire life. So the word, the, the, the R slur is a topic that's extremely personal to me, which is something that I outline in my video. Um, yeah. So it, it's one of those things that makes me <laughs> very frustrated uh, to have this sort of thing happen. And on a larger, in a larger scale, moving away from individual content creators, although I have one other content creator that I definitely need to talk about, or actually two more content creators that I do need to talk about um, in specific. Uh, um, but... Uh, uh, um, there is this problem, especially on Twitter, but in social media and the internet in general, which is that people sort of craft their own hell. And I think this is something that happens a lot, um, unfortunately, in a community that I belong to. And when I say community, I mean the online portion of this community, because obviously the real world community is significantly more complex and I don't think suffers from this problem to the same degree. But online, on social media, because of the way that social media sites operate, because of the way that, um, that, uh, 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 that, that conflict is driven, um, you end up with, uh, People building their own complete, they, they build their own hells. Um, people seek out anger. They seek out, uh, I was talking about this just the other day. I was talking about this on my last stream before I even talked about the Arsler discourse. Um, like, uh, uh, um, I was talking about the fact that like a lot of stream communities, basically they urge people to burn the bridge. Uh, they're they're like excited to to see content creators burn the bridge, and it makes things worse for you. It makes things worse for the people who do that. The people who are excited about seeing creators burn bridges with each other. Uh, it crafts a worse space. People craft a space that is worse for them by encouraging content creators to constantly engage in bridge burning, in 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 not infighting in the way of like that we talk about political infighting, but in fighting among themselves to great severities. The 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 audiences um, reward people for behaving worse, and it drives me up a wall because. I can't help but think that people sort sort of start to craft a hell of their own making uh, that spreads far beyond just Twitter. They start on Twitter. They start with uh, with sort of I don't know. Uh, they start with engaging with these sort of like cancellation campaigns, with shutting people down, and what it ends up resulting in is a wasteland because content creators will burn out. Especially, and like I said, I, I say this coming from the trans community, I'm sort of focusing on a lot of trans spaces on social media. Trans content creators burn the fuck out, they get canceled to shit, they get needled about literally every single uh, disagreement that's possible, and then there's the second layer, which is that there's all this exaggeration, there's this this, this cycle of exaggerating what actually happened, of, of abstracting what actually happened. Um, like, like, 
there was, oh God, I wish I had saved this one tweet. There was a tweet that somebody asked what happened with Keffels and the person summarized it as uh, they were doing fash apologia uh, and both sides in trans issues. That was how somebody, a, a large account that was being asked what happened, characterized Keffels going on to a Twitter space to debate and yell at Nazis. And I can't help but feel like that type of behavior, which is repeated over and over and over again, sort of starts to drive people into a terrible headspace, a terrible social space where everything has to be a be all end all, where everything has to be a burnt bridge, where everything has to be a giant uh, uh, a denouncement. And I don't know, uh, was it Faye in the way? It might've been, I don't remember exactly. Ryan Beard says, I'm not trying to burn bridges with anyone, and I always hate when people on Twitter take things way too far through things like death threats. I've said multiple times I don't think anyone is beyond redemption. I think rehabilitative justice is super important. I'm very glad to hear that. I'm on the side of, of being against canceling people and ruining their careers for one mistake. Well, I'm glad. I'm very glad to hear that. I'm actually really happy to hear that. I'm hoping, uh, you know... I'm hoping there can be like no bad blood because to be fair, I didn't really know much about your content before this myself. Um, this was literally my first interaction was having somebody uh, send me your tweet and go uh, uh, and, and go, uh, oh, look at what look at what is being said about you. And of course, like uh, uh, the comments, the people filling up the comments and all that. I hope that. I hope that this can be a resolution of some sort. I I am not like uh, my my audience can tell you I'm not exactly the uh, the biggest uh, uh, grudge holder. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of grudges, and I try to avoid a bridge burning mentality. Um, and yeah, oh, this is another one. Somebody in chat brings up how the Keffels situation um, spun into people going after Aaron in the Aaron in the morning and Alejandra Caraballo. Um, both of whom are people who do an incredible, incredible uh, amount of work um, uh, trying to combat the ongoing flood of hate. But because they did something that some people don't approve of, which is going into a single Twitter space and engaging in debate, they were called all kinds of things. Um, and... This is the part here where I'm going to uh, I'm going to sort of pivot away. Um, I'm going to say at least at this point, let's we'll call uh, Ryan Beard. We'll call this resolved. I appreciate you coming by and clarifying. And I I I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but I saw that you that you did a tweet about me, and I assume that it's like uh, I assume that it's like well actually I can just read it real quick. I watched the segment. Very glad to hear you don't approve of people using the word as an insult. I still think naming your stream the R slur to stir up controversy was cringe, but whatever. I'm done arguing about this. And don't be disingenuous. You know I was using the positive slang term savage, not the slur used against native people. Well, I, I wasn't saying that you were <laughs> I wasn't saying that you were doing that. I was saying you called me a savage, which you did. Um, but uh, uh, also, uh, I, I don't think, I wouldn't categorize me titling it as controver as stirring up controversy. Uh, and the reason why I would defend that is because, uh, uh, because I, I didn't, I didn't start the controversy. I, I didn't, the controversy was already going. I was hoping that people would come listen to me. And again, I had a very different opinion. Um, part of the reason why I was hoping to get people's eyes is because, let me just give you an example. Vosh. Um, no hate against Vosh. As you guys know, I am friends IRL with Vosh, and I uh, agree with Vosh on most political issues with a few exceptions. But um, Vosh was able to pull about 7,500 people last night when he was talking in favor of using the R slur and arguing that people who don't like the R slur are um, being emotional. And I only at max, even with the controversial title, was only ever able to pull almost 800 people. So 10 times as many people showed up 
to hear Vosh defend the Arsler than uh, the people who showed up to hear me give a long, detailed, and emotional, uh, uh, not like emotional in that way, but be real. I was trying to get people to engage with those emotions, confront them, and analyze why they're there in the first place. So I don't, I don't know if I agree that it's fair to to sort of put on me the assumptions that people read into it. Yeah, it's it's just a matter of that. I I am not going to sh shy away from saying a word that's been used against me, and I didn't use it against anyone else. Uh, with uh, with the exception of a clip that was made of me, uh, where I it, I did make a small joke which was directed at Vosh. Vosh being somebody who supports the use of the R slur, where I said, uh, and I quote, Vosh has been a retard user, and I had a little delay there, and the delay was the joke, because the joke was that people thought that I was gonna call him the R slur, but I actually was talking about the fact that he uses the word all the time. That's a a joke, that's the only joke that I made that even used the, the arsler referring to somebody else. And then of course, Gayfesh clipped it uh, as a joke and put it on a joke account, which people responded to. Um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, anyway, uh, there were a couple of other people um, outside of Ryan Beard, and again, uh, Ryan, uh, Mr. Beard, uh, I really appreciate you coming by. Uh, I apologize about the pronouns at the beginning. I legitimately didn't know uh, about the they, them pronouns. So I hope that we can, like, I hope this can be peace and maybe, I don't know, who knows, maybe it'll be cool from here and we can be cool and whatever, that'd be, co that'd be fun. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, but there were a couple of other creators who engaged in significantly worse behavior, um, particularly, uh, a smaller content creator uh, by the name of uh, 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 by the name of um, Brother Malcolm. Um, now I don't really have much of a history with Brother Malcolm, um, positive or negative. Um, but today, um, Brother Malcolm was going around in comments, and let's just say, boy oh boy. Were there a lot of comments in which, yeah, that's goddammit Malcolm, AKA Brother Malcolm. And let me just say, there were a lot of comments, okay? Let's take a look at this one real quick, okay? Um, this is one here where uh, Brother Malcolm knowingly takes the the edited joke that, that from, you can see in this, actually, I should probably blow this up. Hold on, let me get this bigger so that you all can see what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna show you some examples of what was being said about me and that this has been continued down to the point uh, of, um, yeah, here, let me just give you some examples of this here. So this is the first one, then we have this one, and then we have this one, okay. So the first one here this isn't reclamation, and even if it was, it shouldn't be touted on a public platform. And you will notice that this is a quote tweet of the No Context Demon Mama account, which is a joke account that aggressively, uh, that aggressively and jokingly edits my tweets very obviously. We can actually go, we watch this, this clip on stream, and, um, we watch this clip on stream and the, the, the edit is so jarring. I literally go like, oh, and I like move all the way over here. It's so obvious. And Brother Malcolm is here saying, this isn't reclamation. And even if it was, it shouldn't be touted on a public platform. There wasn't any claim to reclamation there. I was making a very minor tongue in cheek joke about the fact that Vosh says the R slur all the time during my segment. Um, and then yes, exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> the funniest part is that, 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 that you actually tried to minimize the jumping in the cut. Yeah, I know it's, it's very dramatic. And also like brother Malcolm tried to pretend at first. And of course, once he was called on it, he had to back out of it, but immediately tried to, to, to claim that, uh, that, that I obviously was, that I obviously made the joke in an attempt to reclaim the word to call Vosh the arsler. And I want to point this out again. Here we go. 
Here's another example of this. If it's used in a public way like Demon Mama used it, yes, I disagree. Calling Vosh and other people the R word isn't reclamation. It's reactionary rhetoric. I've reclaimed slurs for myself. I don't use them in public and neither should content creators. And I want to, um, I want to point out that this is an example of exactly what I was talking about, of Brother Malcolm crafting a reality, a miserable reality. He's literally out of pure stubbornness, out of not wanting to admit that he was wrong, he is crafting a reality in which not only did I apparently call Vosh the Arsler, but also other people. And I would like a citation for this because it's funny, he also admits in other tweets that he didn't watch the segment, one that I'm about to show you here in just a second. Dude, be real. Who's watching a seven hour stream to comment on the title or the clips of her calling herself and other people the R word? So here is brother Malcolm again, acknowledging he didn't watch the stream. In fact, he's so wrong, he doesn't even know that that topic was only a one hour segment, which is conveniently easily timestamped the moment the stream is uploaded to the channel. So. There is no stream in which the the timestamps aren't up unless, I mean, it, it, I don't think it's ever happened. I don't think Gayfesh has ever missed a timestamp before the video is actually watchable. And it's really funny to me that he would, despite literally acknowledging here, admit that he didn't watch the stream, but then accuse me in the same line of calling myself and other people the R word. I don't know, that's a level of dishonesty that's very hard for me to deal with. And I confronted him on it directly and I got blocked for it. And a bunch of other people who confronted him on it also got blocked. People who pointed out, dude, you just admitted you didn't watch the stream and yet you're accusing me of calling other people the R word. Which is, it's, it's pretty wild to me that somebody would do that. It's pretty wild to me that somebody would be that dishonest. It's, 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 I mean, of course, I also have now blocked Brother Malcolm, but let's just, let's just acknowledge what's going on here. I was lied about, he doubled down on the lie multiple times, continued to say that I did something that I didn't do, uh, got mad at me because he overreacted to my title without actually watching the video, and then proceeded to say that I'm doing something wrong there. That somehow I'm supposed to be in the wrong because he wrote me into a fiction of his own making. It's actually wild. Now, of course, there's another person who's been doing this, a content creator, a legendary milkshake duck content creator by the name of Polly People. Some of you will recall that Polly People uh, is infamous for the disastrous cancellation attempt of Finster and also uh, for getting yelled at in what I consider to be a very rude way by a, another uh, video uh, essayist by the name of Lonerbox. And while we agreed with uh, Polly people in the Lonerbox example, uh, it turned out very quickly that uh, Polly people herself was a pretty disingenuous actor. And I will say, of course, I don't think she did anything wrong in the, in the Lonerbox debate. I think that most of her behavior that I have a problem with happened um, long after that, so. Very, very annoying. Oh, uh, for those who don't know what milkshake duck means, uh, it's a it's a slang term that means like somebody that you that like a nobody who rises to some small level of fame and then immediately proves themselves to be a piece of shit. Uh, and that's been Polly People. But Polly People has also been going around uh, on the internet, uh, spreading the exact same shit about me, uh, saying that I called people the arsler when I did not. Uh, saying that I support the use of the Arsler when I don't. So just just wanted to call out a couple of uh, of content creators who are acting in particularly bad faith. And I have to ask, what what's the accomplish here? What are they accomplishing by lying about me in public when I actually agree more with their position? I, at least on the surface, agree more with Brother Malcolm's position and Polly People's position, which is that the R slur is not a good thing to use. 
and yet for some reason they gotta go and keep doubling down on lies about me even when confronted about it almost seems like there's some clout goblin going on here isn't there almost seems like the topic is not as important as them being able to get clout from jumping on a dog pile. And this of course ties into the, the, the constant cycle that I talk about on uh, leftist social media. And I should be clear, this is on social media. This does not really occur to the same degree outside of social media of just constantly looking for a like crabs in a bucket-esque way to tear down every person based on falsifications often. Now, I wanted to respond to uh, to uh, Ryan Beard here real quick. Ryan Beard says, I am curious to your opinion on this. How do you differentiate between legitimate criticism and woke scold criticism? Um, well, I think that, um, okay, so uh, let me try and explain this. I did a bit of a segment on this yesterday in which I talked about why I think that like woke scold is basically like hall monitor and people should treat it like that. Um, I am not somebody who believes that there is like a nation of woke scolds or a club that people sign up for to be a woke scold. Um, but most of the time, what I consider to be woke scoldy um, is highly hypocritical, highly over-exaggerated uh, criticism that refuses to acknowledge any like charitability whatsoever. Um, it's the same reason why there are conservatives um, there are conservatives uh, who uh, give genuine criticism, but there's also a lot of conservatives who basically walk into your comments and say, you are doing the work of Satan um, uh, down with you and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that a lot of woke, woke scolds, um, like there's a, there's a, there's a behavior. It's it's overstating the harm. Uh, it is explicitly using certain types of um, of progressive language that doesn't actually apply to the situation at hand. Um, like, okay, here's an example of something that I that I think is super woke, Scoldy. And in fact, we're gonna see this. I'm about to react to a debate that I think is a. Um, I think we're gonna to react to a debate with Keffels that I think highlights a lot of the things that I'm about to talk about with the woke scoldy behavior, which is like, um, it's this it's this rules for thee, but not for me. It's an overstating of harm and it's a vagueness. So like, for example, um, people disagree with me all the time, like all the time with all kinds of different reasons and people have all these different reasons, but a woke scold will disagree with me on a single particular take and then they will spin that into me uh, somehow, uh, my position on something somehow being tied to a much greater issue. So like, for example, um, I'm trying to come up with a, with a good example of this. Um, okay, here's an example. Um, imagine if, say, uh, I was to, here's an example. I use the word idiot sometimes. I use the word stupid sometimes. Um, those words are, uh, they do have roots um, in, in ableism. You know what I mean? They, it's true, they do. Now, I personally think that I can do a pretty good job illustrating what the difference between something like the R slur and the word idiot is, but, uh, there are people who will essentially say that because I, in anger, called a fascist an idiot, or that I said, oh, another example, I've actually had people get very angry at me for calling, uh, for calling Donald Trump insane. Now, I acknowledge that calling someone insane um, does have problematic issues. Like, I mean, I've literally talked, I've done an entire segment, hours long segments, talking about um, how sanity is a construct and how uh, like being insane doesn't actually really mean all that much. But people will take me getting mad at Donald Trump and they'll say, you were being ableist there. And then instead of just saying like that and leaving it there and saying, hey, you should be careful with those languages, they will tie it into something bigger. They'll say like, don't you know that disabled people are discriminated against at a higher rate? And I will go, well, yes, of course I know that. I talk about that on my show. And they will go, don't you know that disabled people have been negatively impacted by COVID because of discrimination? I will go, yes, of course, something I've talked about on my channel. And then the response will be, well, then why are you being enabled? And 
uh, and then often this is also paired with an attempt to shut you down in some way. So, uh, oh, uh, this, isn't it, can we be finished with ableists like Demon Mama? Um, which is something I see directed at people all the time. When are we going to stop deal when are we going to stop listening to the transphobe demon mama there's this this process it's i tried to explain it obviously it's a little bit hard to explain a slang term like woke scold or tender queer or whatever um but i think that um i think that it's it's like a behavior it's kind of like calling somebody you're being a bit of a cop right now you're being a bit of a karen right now you're being a bit of a hall monitor right now and like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I think that it's unhelpful. And when it's, um, when it, it, when it goes outwards, I think that it does, there's, there's a sp particular aspect of this behavior that I think becomes genuinely problematic, like actually dangerous. And that is the, uh, and that is the sort of like the, the cycle, the, the self-justifying cycle that happens where um, evidence is no longer valued because the statements that are made are essentialist statements. Um, so, like, for example, uh, you get accused of being racist for, uh, I don't know, uh, you get accused of being racist because, let's use a Keffel's example, you get accused of being racist for saying that you don't think there's a problem with someone making a dumpling book, okay? Um, that is an example. This is one of the perfect examples of like cancellation self-reinforcing. Keffel says, I don't think there's a problem with the dumpling book. For the record, I understand where some of the original critiques of the dumpling book were coming from, but I also don't think that it was racist to not think that the dumpling book was racist. Now, there are a lot of people who will unironically call Keffel's a racist because of the dumpling situation. Now, once that's been done, you have a faction of people who claim that you're a racist and some of them might provide evidence, some of them won't. Some of them will will totally misrepresent what actually happened. And But then what will happen is um, the next time somebody calls you a racist, they will point back to the first time that you were called a racist. This isn't the first time that you've been, this isn't the first time that the POC community has talked to you about this. And, and then it builds on itself. And over time, more and more people get on board, but they never actually go look at what happened. In fact, I, I genuinely think that um, Lindsay Ellis's video, uh, her like, her video where she left, where she left video making entirely, and she talks about all of the things that she's been canceled for, is one of the best examples of this type of thing. Um, where she just goes and says, here's what I got canceled for, and then sets up the timeline as to why people can, after like four fraudulent cancellations, even if those cancellations don't take off, uh, a, a certain, a, a faction, a small faction of harassers can basically keep repeating that and essentializing you and never provide any actual receipts, never actually correctly characterize anything, but because there's a lot of people who are in their heart of hearts do not want to be racist. There are actual people out there who do want to listen to marginalized people. Um, this sort of cycle can become can become like a hack to convince people that, that oh, this person, we need to distance ourselves from this person. And I think it's really, really bad. This is the part of it that I think is most problematic. Um, and I do think this is a genuine problem on the left. Like, um, like, I, I think it's a huge problem on the left. In fact, it's a huge problem on the left to the degree that as a part of my channel, since I started my channel, uh, I, I have made it a mission to make videos in which I show all the receipts to the absolute best of my ability. People in chat can tell you that my drama mamas, the videos where I fo focus on a specific drama, I will spend like a week prepping those videos and getting all the receipts in order so that people can understand what I'm talking about and why. And this is a big problem. So, I mean, it's so common that there are no receipts provided. Uh, I mentioned earlier that example of somebody characterizing Aaron in the morning and uh, and uh, Alejandra Caraballo um, as uh, both sizing trans issues with fascists. 
which to me is is I would consider that a lie, like an explicit lie. Like I think that it is a lie to say that that because these people one time debated a fascist, that they are both sizing trans issues with fascists. I think that's a lie. But this tweet had thousands of interactions and tons of people repeating it without any sort of verification. And when people asked, they were like, the response would be, this isn't the first time Aaron has done this. This isn't the first time Alejandra Caraballo has been called out for this type of behavior. And this has happened to me from a from from other factions online as well. I mean, I mentioned that I had two actual manifestos written about me. Um, and there were so many falsehoods in those manifestos, but because they were in a large document and because the claims were made confidently and because the claims were made to a fan base that has a parasocial attachment to the creator that was putting out those lies, they become ammunition. And even people who aren't a member of those fan bases then say, yeah, but don't you know that Demon Mama advocated for cooking meth and, and, and estradiol in your bathtub at home? Don't you know that Demon Mama wants to give children dangerous homemade drugs that is a real thing that i see said about me on the internet to this day people will say you're the person who wants to give kids dangerous bathtub drugs which is insane and nothing close to what i believe so i don't think that people should should take the word woke scold or tender queer too far but also i think we should acknowledge that there is a type of behavior that falls into this ryan beard says destiny has also been really awful to me too his community kind of pushed me back into the closet for being non-binary because destiny said that non-binary people don't exist then his community harassed me for it yeah they're fucking pieces of shit that community is is they're they're a lost cause i mean that um the people who still remain in that community uh like his community is like he purges his community of certain types of followers on a relatively frequent basis and it, the result is that only the most like slavishly addicted people remain in his community and it's a pretty regular thing um so his community is particularly willing to digest basically anything that he claims about anything it's fucking terrible uh, he still does videos on me i literally don't engage with him or his followers whatsoever um yeah it's terrible and i'm sorry you had to deal with that uh it's definitely something we've shared um his community uh, went insane on me for a a year plus uh, because uh, I don't know I don't even know how to categorize it at this point point. Um, and also uh, he mocked my partner's suicide which had nothing to do with him my partner has essentially nothing to do with him he just targeted my partner as a way to get to me pretty terrible so Su did I say suicide I meant suicide attempt attempt sorry attempt sorry Attempt. Uh, I, I'm stumbling over my words a little bit. Yes, thankfully, Doe is still alive and doing very well. Very, Doe is very far from that moment. Yeah, Doe is doing very, very good and very far from the from that particular moment, thankfully. It's ironic, of course, because that entire incident had nothing to do with the internet um, and had everything to do with a, uh, with a very particular life circumstance of incredible physical danger that Doe was previously living in and no longer lives in physical danger. So, anyway, uh, all of this is to say that... Uh, Twitter is a horrible place and people make Twitter worse for themselves by constantly refusing to verify the truth, by constantly um, jumping on board with, um, I don't know, just dog piles, just tons and tons of dog piles. And just, just so that we're clear, it's no surprise to me that it's mostly trans people that get the worst dog piles of all. I've talked about this in so many different ways and the reasons why this happens, but trans people 
uh, get the worst end of the stick because they will get dogpiled by reactionaries and they also, any trans person who sort of uh, makes it to any level of success will become the will become a target and, uh, or sh I should say not a target, but will become a subject of projection. Um, and part of this is just, is understandable. Like the trans community has a lot of people who've been traumatized by constantly being literally persecuted by conservatives. But, um, and as a result, that can mean that there's a lot of pain uh, involved with trans people's relations to uh, other trans people and, tra and trans public figures. This has happened to ContraPoints, where ContraPoints is expected to be a perfect person to millions of different people's standards of what a perfect person is, because ContraPoints is one of a handful, in fact, ContraPoints is like one of the only trans people uh, in, in her line of work that has ever reached any level of prominence. Now, of course, there's more, uh, but at the time Contra, at the time of ContraPoints biggest cancellation, ContraPoints was the only uh, trans person, especially the only trans woman who'd raised to that, who's, who'd raised to that level of prominence. And so as a result, all of these trans people who have no representation, who have no one else to look to, it's very easy to accidentally sort of project your idea of of problem of of like perfection onto that person and expect it because they're the only trans person that you might ever see in that space. And if they do something that pisses you off, it's easy to accidentally or intentionally or accidentally take it very personally. And I think that what that does is um it just creates this toxic cycle and we have to fight against it. I just think we do. Ryan Beard says, anyway, I think I'm going to head out. I wish you nothing but the best. I also talked to Kevin and expects that I'm not trying to label any of you as evil as, or irredeemable. I just had criticism against certain actions, but that doesn't mean I think any of the dogpiling is okay. I hope you have a great rest of your stream. Well, thank you very much for coming by, and I, I do appreciate you coming by. Uh, let's call it peace, all right? There we go. We're all good now. We're all, we're, all, we're all worked out, and I'm glad you walked my segment. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for... Uh, thank you for... for Thank you for uh, doing for doing the right thing. Honestly, thank you for the the apology and the correction. I do actually unironically appreciate that, and I respect you more for it. So thank you about that. Hope you caught that. 